this video we'll discuss how to conduct an air conduction screening using an audiometer. We discuss how to assess children over two and a half years old using play audiometry and clients over five years old using pure tone audiometry. We conduct hearing screenings in order to determine whether the client's hearing falls within the normal range. Audiometry is conventionally performed after the clinician has taken the client's clinical history and after otoscopy and tympanometry is performed. Screening tests are often used to check large populations quickly to highlight problems that should be followed up. The clinician would also decide on a pass-fail criteria. Usually, children would be expected to respond to 20 decibels at 500 Hz, 1000 Hz, 2000 Hz and 4000 Hz for both ears, whereas the pass criteria for adults may be 25 decibels across the frequency range. Clients who do not meet the PASS criteria should be assessed by an audiologist or an audiometrist within one month of them being screened for a more thorough evaluation of their hearing. Clinicians must wash their hands prior to seeing each client. Equipment that comes into contact with a client must be cleaned with an alcohol wipe, whereas insert headphone tips should be thrown away after a single use. Check the equipment at the start of every day. Put the headphones on, present tones across the frequency range to both ears individually and check that the response button is working. Check the calibration sticker to ensure that your equipment is within its calibration period and use alternate equipment if the equipment is either faulty or is out of calibration. If the client has occluding earwax, arrange for them to have this removed prior to conducting your hearing screening. If the client has discharging ears, Arrange for them to see their GP for medical treatment and have them return for a hearing assessment once their ears have stopped discharging. Instructions should be clear and concise and given to the client prior to placing headphones onto them. The following information should be conveyed and understood by the client. They are listening for very soft sounds. They should respond every time they hear a sound. They will hear sounds of different pitches. The tones will be heard in one ear at a time and they need to be informed of how to respond once they've heard a sound. Common response types are to raise their hand, to press a button, to say yes, or a play response in children. Ask the client to remove any items that may interfere with a headphone placement, such as glasses, earrings, and hearing aids. Ensure that the client cannot see you when you're presenting the sounds. Position them away from the line of sight of your equipment, and check that they cannot see your hand movements in a reflection. The red headphone speaker should be placed on the client's right ear and the blue headphone on their left ear. The diaphragm of the headphone must be directly over the ear canal. Adjust the headphone band to fit the client. The clinician may choose to use insert headphones instead of conventional headphones if the clients have collapsing ear canals or if there's a significant background noise. When commencing a hearing screening, you'd like to test the better ear or the right ear first. The test sound can either be a pure tone or a warble. The latter should be selected when testing children or clients with tinnitus. The length of presentation should be between 1 and 2 seconds. Start with a stimulus intensity of 30 decibels if the hearing loss is not suspected or 60 decibels if a hearing loss is suspected. If the client does not respond, increase the intensity of the tone by 20 decibels until the patient responds. Once the client has responded, decrease the intensity of the tone by 10 decibels until there is no response. Then, increase by 5 decibels until a response is obtained. Lower the stimulus intensity again by 10 decibels, then repeat. We take the threshold as a level at which the patient responds in an ascending series at least 2 out of 3 times. Record the results on an audiogram. The right ear thresholds are conveyed as circles, whereas the left ear thresholds are crosses. You may wish to obtain the specific threshold of the client, or you may wish to screen down to a certain set point. In the latter, if you obtain a response for the pass mark, then you'll move on to the next frequency. When testing children, you should test 1 kHz first, followed by 4 kHz, then 500 Hz and 2 kHz. 
If there's a difference between the consecutive frequencies of more than 20 decibels, you may wish to test the intermediate frequency. It is recommended that you retest the threshold of 1 kHz once you've completed testing. If your threshold is within 5 decibels of the original threshold, your results are considered to be reliable. If there's more than 5 decibels difference, the screening should be repeated. The type of assessment you carry out for a screening should be age appropriate. Play audiometry is suitable for children over two and a half years. Pure tone audiometry tends to be suitable for clients five years and over. The difference between pure tone audiometry and play audiometry is that the response for the latter is a play response. The clinician needs to condition the child to respond to sound by placing a peg in a board or placing a marble into a container. When you're demonstrating how the child should respond, ensure your stimulus is sufficiently loud enough so that the child understands the procedure. Make sure the child can carry out the response independently prior to starting the testing phase of the assessment. It is important to praise the child throughout testing and to vary the play response before the child loses interest. For the testing phase, turn down the intensity of the stimulus. Instruct the child that you're going to put the headphones on their head, but they'll hear the sounds just the same, and that they still need to put the marble in the container once you hear the sound. From there onwards, obtain the child's hearing threshold using the modified Houston-Westlake technique of down 10 up 5, or you may wish to use a down 15 up 5 approach. If the child becomes restless, then aim to get 1 kHz and 4 kHz thresholds in both ears. You may need the child to return for a second appointment in order to complete their audiogram. To summarise how to perform an air conduction screening, carry out play audiometry for children over 2.5 years and pure tone audiometry for children over 5. Give clear and concise instructions to the client and ensure that they're faced away from the audiometer. Test the better ear or the right ear first and obtain hearing thresholds using the down 10, up 5 decibel technique or down 15, up 5 decibel technique in children. If the client does not obtain the pass mark across the frequency range, refer them for further testing by an audiologist or an audiometrist.